how to receive riches and manifest without any harmful cause any uh harmful causation without any painful toil and without any sorrow that's the message on my heart today i don't have like a written out uh bible study or anything like that so i don't have any uh quoted scriptures for you i will quote scripture but they're always paraphrased because the word of god is always in my heart so i speak the word of god from my heart and um the interpretation and revelation by interpretation and revelation of the holy spirit okay so it's gonna be kind of like a quick you know video just speak in my heart you know the bible says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and so i that's where i'm speaking to you from today on the subject of how to manifest without painful toil without you know any harmful causation and without any sorrow and you know the reason why that message is on my heart you know so much is because a lot of people are using uh different avenues of manifesting things in their life and i'm noticing even with my life and other people's lives that we begin to manifest things that we want by willing it or speaking it you know and we think it's good stuff and it's not because it's not a part of our purpose in life so before you begin to manifest things you have to find out who you are okay and i suggest you find out who you are in christ jesus you know because jesus said i am the way i am the truth and i am the life and when you welcome me you welcome the father and the bible talks about the father the father of the heavenly lights you know i think it's in james um where it talks about god and identifies god as the father of the heavenly lights and it says that every good gift comes from the father of the heavenly lights hallelujah and he does not shift like the shifting shadows and then there's another verse i forget where is that where it talks about how god the blessings of the lord makes us rich and he adds no sorrow and another translation says that no painful toil he adds no painful toil with it and a lot of the things that we are manifesting a lot of the things that we're getting in life you know are things that we want but we find that it's coming with painful toil we find that we don't enjoy that our answered prayers you know and then we get a disappointed when we have prayers that are not answered <clears throat> You know, and it's because a lot of times we are praying with a heart that is amiss. The Bible talks about the heart being deceitful among all things. And the Bible talks about how we honor God with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. So a lot of times when we are asking God or going to God in prayer, our hearts are far from the purpose that God has for us. For every one of us, we are here on this earth because God breathed his breath of life in us in order that we serve the purpose in which we sent, in which he sent us. Hallelujah. He sent us into this realm to live in. Hallelujah. Whether you want to describe it as hell, whether you want to describe it as heaven, whether you want to describe it as, you know, the matrix, whether you want to uh, describe yourself as woke or sleep, it doesn't matter because we all have different seasons and whether we're woke or sleep, it all, it, it, as long as our steps are ordered by God, it doesn't matter. As long as we are in the Lord's hand, it does not matter. And so whether you uh, manifest by asking God or you manifest by confessing with your mouth, your heart should not be far from God because if your heart is far from God, you have some other type of entity that is answering your prayers.
and giving you what you want before you're ready for it, God says, I, I will not give you more than what you can bear. And so that's why sometimes we receive manifestations in our lives because we want it and we seek it and we confess it and we ask for it or we obtain it ourselves. You know, however you um, obtain the things that you desire hallelujah if your heart is far from god then and you are obtaining these things and that means you're obtaining it before you're ready and so you can't handle the blessing god says he does not put new wine into old wine skin and so a lot of the things that you want to obtain, you have to be a new person in order to obtain that, whether it be a new job, whether it be marriage, whatever it is that you want, you have to be prepared to become a new creature in order to receive that blessing that you're asking for in order to go into your next Hallelujah. You have to deal with yourself and who you are now. And a lot of people just have this whole idea that, you know, accept me for who I am. I ain't going to never change. I ain't going to never change. You know what I'm saying? And they think it sounds good, but it does not sound good. It doesn't sound good and it does not behoove you to confess with your mouth that you're never going to change and the universe and people in the universe and everybody that come across you need to accept you for who you are, take you or leave you, okay? Because you're going to find out the hard way that people would rather leave you and then you're going to be finding something else to complain about. You know, people, people don't know how to be good people. People are not friends. You're the only good one. The Bible says, do not esteem yourself higher than you are and to esteem your brother or your sister higher than yourself. Hallelujah. So like we have to have a heart that's not far from God, because if we have a heart that's far from God, that means that we are uh, seeking to manifest things that are, um, let's see, things that are um, a stumbling block to the good and perfect will that God has for you. And when God, when, when God establishes you in his good and perfect will for you, oh, glory, hallelujah, he makes you rich without painful toil without you know harmful causation whether it be mentally emotionally what whatever type of harm comes with it whatever reason why you can't enjoy this blessing it can be a marriage you have entered into a marriage covenant with someone and it's it's painful toil trying to keep that marriage because it's too easy to lose that person because that person may not be the promise that God has for you. That job may not be the promise that God has for you. And even if it is, let's just entertain the idea that it is for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says what God has for you is for you. So you shouldn't mind waiting on that thing until you are a new creature, because God says, if you put new wine and that marriage may be new wine, hallelujah. New wine, that job, that new job may be new wine. Those new relationships in your life, whether it be, you know, because you're writing a book and, and you're um, interacting with people or dealing with people who are helping you to write that book or you're trying to start a business and you are interacting with people that is trying to help you build that business or what, you know, these relationships that you're entering into, you got to think about that. Are you entering the wrong relationships? Are you entering the right relationships in the wrong time? Because God says he does not put new wine that those relationships. Okay. That you're entering into in order to produce a harvest in order to manifest that thing that you desire, whether it be a job, whether it's to be a businessman or a businesswoman, whether it's to be married. Hallelujah. That those are new wine blessings. And if, if God or the universe is to pour these new wine blessings, these new covenant relationships, you know, these new jobs, these new um, establishments, if God is to pour this into you before you are uh, made a new creature, before you are ready, then the Bible says that, you know, the new wine will burst the old wine skin and then cause harm to you because you were not equipped to handle that thing. 
and then it will cause harm to people around you. And then the new wine that you got will be wasted. So you wasting your time getting married before you ready, before you became a new creature. You wasting your time entering into relationships to help you build your business into, into relationships, you know, and a new job that you have, you're wasting time you're wasting that new wine you're wasting that new blessing you're wasting that anointing you're wasting that answered prayer because you did not wait on the timing of god hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah and so i was waiting for the holy spirit to talk to me about this so that i can write it down and make it plain and then present it to you you know but i feel like um, a lot of times I'm a little bit robotic when it comes to trying to read the message off the paper. I'm not sure, but you know, however the Lord allows me to deliver the message, I'm willing to do it. And I just felt led today not to wait for the Holy Spirit to give it to me slowly so I can write it down and really think about it. Because a lot of times you think about something before you do it or before you say it, which is, which is good to do. But sometimes when you're doing that, <clears throat> you know, um, you end up, um, drawing information from your flesh. You end up drawing information from the enemy because he sees what you're doing and he's trying to find a back door to get in there somehow and add some untruth to the truth that you are trying to deliver. So sometimes God is like, you know what? Just open your mouth. And then trust that I will fill it. Your steps are ordered by me. Hallelujah. And so sometimes I just want to present a message, you know, just by opening my mouth and allowing the allowing God to pour out what's in my heart to the people. And hopefully the anointing will pour out with it. He will add a blessing to his word and you will be blessed and it will cause change. It will cause you to hear God's voice and obey. All right. Hallelujah. You hear within the natural, my voice, but in the spiritual, you want to be able to hear God's voice. And God is saying, beloved, think about your heart before you manifest things into your life, before you ask and then receive. Okay. But he said, how do you manifest good things into your life? How do you manifest what you desire, what your, heart de what your heart desires? First off, your heart can't be far from God when you are desiring things. Hallelujah. Because you may be in a position where you need to ask God to restore a right spirit in you and to take out your stony heart and to give you a heart of flesh, which means a heart that is humble. And God said, humble yourselves and pray. If only you will humble yourselves and pray and ask God that you shall receive. Seek God and you shall find hallelujah knock on kingdom doors and you will and and the doors to the kingdom of god will be open to you and he will give you without finding fault he will give you he when he is able to not find fault in you and if you're covered in the blood of jesus and if you're receiving your blessings and the right timing and god timing on your divine appointment then hallelujah, there is no way God will be able to find fault in you. Not if you're covered under the blood, not if you're praying and seeking him in humility, not if you're seeking first the kingdom of God, then everything your heart desires will be added unto you, but not in your timing, in the timing of God. Hallelujah. So I hope that you was blessed by this message. I want you to have a blessed day. I want you to pick up these pearls and rock them, beloved. Do not trample on these pearls. Pick them up and rock them because guess what the Bible says? The Bible says that we shall not throw our pearls to pigs because they will trample them. So don't be a pig, beloved. Do not trample the pearls that I am speaking to you today. Hallelujah. When somebody is praying for you, don't trample all over it. When somebody is giving you wisdom or adding wisdom to your knowledge or adding increase to your knowledge by giving you wisdom. Hallelujah. Don't trample on it. Beloved, don't find fault with it. Pick it up and rock it, boo. And if you don't know how to pick it up and rock it, God said, ask for wisdom and I will give it to you generously without finding fault. Hallelujah. So just hold on to it. 
until God teaches you by the power of his Holy Spirit, until God teaches you by the revelation of his Holy Spirit, how to apply it to your life. Rest on it, sleep on it, pray on it. Ask God, hallelujah. Ask him and you shall receive. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you want to manifest through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, because through Jesus Christ, he says, by his spirit, he will teach you and guide you in the ways that you shall go. And he will counsel you with his loving eye on you. Hallelujah. So, like I said, be blessed. This is the day the Lord has made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. Not just us, but even our children, all those and all that is connected to us and our children and our children's children and all of our children to come. Hallelujah. May we rejoice in every day that the, that God breathes life into us and be glad in it and delight ourselves in God because God says, if you delight in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. And only a heart that is not blocking God with prayers that are missed, that are amiss, has desires that please God to the point where he is moved to answer your prayers. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Be blessed, beloved. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. Okay, you can like this video, you can share this video. All right, if you're watching me on any other website, you know, just go to YouTube and subscribe to me there. You can comment, you can share, get this message out, get this message out because this is coming straight from the Lord's mouth. Hallelujah. When God makes a command, he speaks that which is not as if it is, and he makes a way out of nowhere, and he uses the mouths of his prophets to speak through us so that you can hear his voice and obey. All you have to do is be willing. He said that, you know, the Bible says that the, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So, so, so what you should do is, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, he to the, the, your spirit and not to your flesh. Yield to your spirit and not to your flesh because your spirit, hallelujah, will be made one with the spirit of God, hallelujah, and raise a standard against the desires of your flesh that block the, your mere human concerns that block the, 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 the plans that God has for you to prosper you and not to harm you, but to establish you in his good and perfect will for you. He said that every good and perfect gift comes from the father of the heavenly lights, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Comes from the Father of the heavenly lights and he does not change like the shifting shadows. So if you want to manifest something, manifest. Find out. Seek God and, and find out what his good and perfect will is for you. So that that be the only thing you manifest in his perfect timing for you. And he says he will bless you. He will bless you. Hallelujah. He said that his blessings will make you rich without no sorrow, no painful toil. And because he does not change like the shifting shadows, hallelujah, you can be, you can enter into a marriage covenant with someone and not have to worry about divorce because God says with his mouth and his word doesn't come back to him void. So he says with his mouth, let nothing bring asunder what God has brought together, what I have brought together. So if God says, let it not be that anything bring asunder, you ain't got to worry about somebody taking your man if you don't add up. You ain't got to worry about that man getting distracted. You ain't got to worry about that woman uh, 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 giving you a bad harvest from the seeds you are planted because you are planting seeds that God has given you to plant and you have wisdom because you ask God for wisdom and he decided to give you without finding fault. You ask God for wisdom and how to plant those seeds and when to plant those seeds so that you will reap a good harvest from your wife, so that you will reap a good harvest from your marriage. 
Hallelujah. And God is not going to give you no seed or no, no bad seed. And he's not going to give you no, uh, bad soil to put your seed in. So if your wife represents the soil that you plant your seed in, hallelujah. And if you waited on God to give you that wife, then you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God and that wife will never do anything to cause you any harm. Hallelujah. No painful toil, no sorrow, and no snatchback because God does not change like the shifting shadows. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like. I love you in Jesus name. God bless you in Jesus name. Later. Till next time.